Hello there people, this is Christian and welcome back to Fusion for 60 and uh, Archimedean Solid. I've already done this in an earlier workflow or the earlier video, uh, but I didn't like the workflow really and I've been, yeah, I also learned stuff. So this is what I would, say I would call a better workflow. Sorry for me mumbling. Uh, and let's have a look at this. Uh, this is parameter driven, of course, we can change this dimension to 50 and the body resizes or the model resizes and uh, in this case it's dimension from pentagon face to the center of the body and the center in this design is placed around the origin point so we can do use uh, things easier to place it i think easier to place it and of course we can also dimension it from hexagon face to the center there's a line here we can use for that so i'm going to have a look at both of those and i would immediately say this sketch here which is this one here is a bit confusing when you're looking at it like this but i'll try to explain what's going on in it so we're going to start a new design we create a new sketch we're going to sketch from the front it's going to be here and we're going to start with our pentagon face uh or the pentagon five like that we're going to mark it and switch it to construction geometry i want to avo avoid profiles it gets confusing with blue flashing things in the screen this is going to be vertical this is the arrangement of the triangles on an icosahedron there are five triangles arranged that creates basically one side of looking at the icosahedron so we're going to need a line from here this line it represents the edge that would be here and this needs to be equal to this because the icosahedron has equilateral uh, triangles or faces we're going to also make a line, let's make it straight down here for now. We're going to make it coincident to here. Is that enough? We have locked down some things. Uh, why did you do this line? Yes, I want to find the center point of icosahedron. And that is a line. It's going to be in the middle of this edge, which is edge, so the center of edge, and perpendicular out this line is pointed to the center points the same thing with this this is a vertex a line straight down here would point to the center point so these two points combined by you in a coincident constraint this is going to be our center point of the body so we're going to do coincident of that point make it coincident to the meridian point down here so as you can see it turns the lines uh, back but it's not really fully constrained because there's no dimension uh, fusion does that sometimes uh, so this is our basic uh, shape for the icosahedron but we're doing a truncated icosahedron so we might need to find where we truncated and if we have a look here so look this hexagon face here is really the triangle face of icosahedron if you extend this out to these to these three pentagons here you just draw this face out the edge of our points of this triangle it will make if you pull it out that's the vertex of icosahedron so this here line here i'm going to make a line make it more obvious it's going to be from center point up to here this here is the center line of one of the triangles so it would be from down here up to the vertex up here but i don't want to do that line right now i'm going to create a triangle faces makes it easier to see things free and we're going to constrain uh, this point up to here and we're going to do a midpoint between this line and here this is going to be the shape of uh, the triangular face of a cosahedron and we're going to do a new line from here to here the thing i'm trying to do i want to create the hexagon face on this and <coughs> sorry for that uh, if I want to turn a triangle into a hexagon with all sides equal, I need to cut off it in one section like this. And the question is, where? Oops, sorry. Where is this line going? It needs to go somewhere. Yes, it is a midpoint constraint between this and this, because if you cut off a triangle halfway between the center points and a and a point of it, you get an hexagon inside. So that means we're gonna do a line, not a construction line now for clearance from here 
straight out to here so you can see we need to need, need this line here we could just use the midpoint right here i don't need do this to explain a bit this is going to be our truncation of a cosohedron if you think about it the cosohedron goes up to this vertex and truncation is cutting off all the vertices and we cut off it here so that's that and we'll do one more line we'll do a line from here to here this is uh the distance from, uh, let's look at it straight out, uh, sorry, this here is the dimension we want to use if we want to dimension it from hexagon phase to center point, it's this line here, uh, and if we want to dimension it from the pentagon phase, it's from this line here down to here, so just do the pentagon phase once again, from here to here, say we want uh, the total dimension of the part to be 100 millimeters that means this is going to be 50 because half of it but doing that we have now have a fully crystalline sketch we can't move anything around let's move the dimension outside for clearance yes finish sketch let's go to our home view so now we're going to create one of our triangular faces so we're going to do construction plane we do plane at angle and use this construction line here and it's going to create perpendicular to the plane the line is on sketch now so that's correct we create a sketch on this new little plane here we need to project in two things i want the center of a triangle and i want the vertex up here create a polygon yes we're going to do a tri triangle three sides and use coincident constraints from here to here and this to here we have a fully defined sketch we're going to finish the sketch so the first thing we are basically going to do by closer here but only one face so we're going to do s for search and we'll do a loft solid loft from here to this point hit ok if you just now want to do icosahedron, you can do the circular patterns i will do in a short while but before we do that because we're going to do truncations uh, we're going to cut off one of the vertex up here. We're going to split body, this body, and we're going to use this line here. Just cut it off like that. That is now that f that is parallel to the normal face of his. That's correct. We're going to get open up two bodies, and the body we want, we're going to keep that one. That one we don't need. We're going to right click and select remove. Of course, we only have one face. We need to do the rest of them. So we're going to do a circular pattern of faces this face around the center line we created here it says wrong number we're going to do three because triangle have three points and edges like that we've done that so these two steps i've made here over so three steps uh, split body remove and the circular pattern is for creating a trunk at icosahedron if you don't do these three steps uh, you will get a normal icosahedron so no let's do a circular pattern going to do it of bodies now this body around the axis here we need five of those we started to get somewhere uh, for simplicity now i will just mark everything and do a solid combine reduce the number of bodies i would do a combine of n anyway but i just like to do it here now because i can now once again do a circular pattern bodies i only want one body to select axis is going to be any edge on the below side here that goes from uh, the center of one of the pentagon faces to the center of the body so here this time is going to be five that's correct thank you and we'll get basically everything we are missing one body so we're going to do a mirror you can do anybody you want a body type select the top body and the mirror plane is going to be the face of a body like that it happens to be joined we can do yeah you can do join doesn't matter that much because we're gonna mark everything do a solid combine hire the sketches for now and that's how i make a truncator because hidden let's see we should be able to see if this crashes things if we suppress yes suppress features like that now oh, it crashes sorry I thought it could easily turn it into a cosahedron but if you don't do the truncation you get a normal cosahedron now let's open up our sketches and show dimensions we did this 50 so let's try can we make it uh, 87 yes it works and we can also go back and edit the sketch and remove this dimension 
and instead dimension it from here to this going to be 100 finish sketch and now instead we have dimension it from hexagon face to the hexagon face over here we can do an inspection to check it here to where are you there you are 200 yes we had 100 so double as a 200 close Hide our sketch we're going to do some checking we'll do that at this edge here and this edge here they are both 44.1056 for here. so this is using geometry so uh, the model is what i would call perfect so definition of perfect always in computers and math but this is as close as i can get it so this is my new workflow in uh, some different steps and i think it's a bit clearer how to uh, i get here i hope it's useful for you take care see you around and goodbye